A regional championship ma matchup for the ages pairs the consensus number one team in Division Two against a squad on the brink of program history, riding a state best 18 game win streak into the Elite Eight. We've got the top two teams in the state squaring off for a spot in the state final four as number one Lutheran West battles number two Shelby. And you can enjoy all the action live and free from the Stroh Center coming up next. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Is a Crown Crasher Jeep Dodge Ram today the better way to buy? Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the Hawkenberry Trucking and Excavating pregame show where we are live and free with you this afternoon here at the fabulous Stroh Center. The top two teams in the AP poll meeting for a regional championship today. I'm Brian Skronsky. Mark Bollinger is with me, and I think I said on Thursday in the semis that, you know, big game, big stage, it doesn't get much better than this. I think it does. I think we're living it right now. I think it gets a little bit better it only been better if this would have been in the championship game, maybe for a state title, but instead we're going to get it in a regional final. Number one versus number two, anxious to see this thing go down today. And I think there's a lot of anxious people here in the building as well, Mark, as you look around. Plenty of Shelby fans hoping to see some history because they're going to be up against it. Let's tell you about number one ranked Lutheran West, the consensus top team in the state. They made it to the D2 championship game last year. They actually dropped out of the Chagrin Valley Conference to compete against the independent schedule this season, and they've collected some major wins. You look at the only two losses against some D1 state powers. So this is a team, I mean, they're primed, they're ready, they're playing some fabulous basketball, and they're tested. Well, they are balanced and deep. They have two first-team all-district players and four honorable mention all-district players. That is just basically unheard of to have six guys get some kind of all-district recognition. 
like you said, they're number one, but this is not a flashy, high-flying, dunk show kind of team. This is just a group that is solid, plays high-level basketball. They're just really efficient and really good. And see that gentleman right there wearing the number zero? That is Jason Levis, a very talented, lanky guard. Going to be heading to Finlay next year. And he plays with some pretty good pace. Uh, what I like about him is that he can both score and distribute at a high level. Got first team all Northeast Lakes District for a reason. Well, he does a lot of things for this club, but the one thing he really does is he shoots the ball very well. When they get dribble penetration, a lot of those kickouts end up in his hands. And if he gets open looks, he's going to bury them. So we'll see who they put on Mr. Levis, that being the Shelby Whippets and head coach Greg Galloway and his staff. It'll be interesting to see. But for number two, Shelby, looking for their first ever state appearance with a regional championship win today. They have already cemented themselves, in my opinion, as the greatest team to do it in program history, winning their fifth straight MOAC, fourth ever district crown, and a win today I think would make this group legendary at the school. Well, and this group has just gotten better and better as the year has went on. They are playing their best basketball at the right time. They know the challenge ahead of them tonight. But for Lutheran West, there's a challenge on the other end because Shelby has earned that number two ranking. And they've done so behind their Mr. Basketball candidate, recently named a finalist for that prestigious award, had a monster double-double in the regional semi against Lima Shawnee. And he's just, he's tough to guard for anybody because he's got the length to shoot over you, Mark. He handles well enough that any fast guard that you put on him, he can handle that too. But then he shoots it well from three. So I think that this is like the ultimate mismatch of any player on the floor today. Well, and one great thing about Alex is he has been so unselfish and he has worked so hard to get himself to this position. Tonight, it may be a night that he needs to be a little bit more selfish early in the game. He talked in the post game Thursday night about waiting until that second half, to third, you know, second half, fourth quarter to go ahead and attack some of those driving lanes when it got a little tight. Tonight, depending on the game situation, he may need to go into selfish mode a little bit earlier because he can get shots whenever he wants them. He may need those early tonight for the Whippets to be successful. He did that in a few games in the MOAC to help lead the Whippets to a 14-0 perfect mark. They may need to rename it the S-A-E-E, -E, Shelby and everybody else, Mark, because between they and the ladies, they're just winning all the chips. They have been very good over the last five or six years here in Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference play. But for Shelby, that conference title, that's so far in the rear view <laughs> yeah. mirror. They want this one tonight because, as you said, this could solidify their legacy as maybe the greatest team in Shelby basketball history. And they've got one of the great fan bases, not only in North Central Ohio, but I think the entire state, Mark. So I've got a little special presentation for you coming up right now. Let's hear from the leader of the Red Rage and what they do to get ready on game day. I am courtside now, and I've got maybe the best student section in the entire state hanging out with me. And not only that, maybe the best leader of any student section for so for anybody who doesn't know, introduce yourself and let them know what is your official job title with the Red Rage. Uh, my name is Preston and I'm the leader of the Red Rage. So leader works, I like that, that, yes. that fits. Yes. Uh, you guys come up with game plans, you're very detail oriented, so why is this something that you have decided to do? Well, you know, when you have coordination and you have details, it's way easier to effectively communicate and have everybody on the same page. We have every all the cheers, everything that we do right on there. So if someone doesn't come to a game, they're coming to the first game of the year, maybe tonight, then they'll know exactly what to do. They don't have to go to every game and learn. It's written down in stone. Here's what we're doing when, you know. So, good under so everybody understands what's going on. And has this remained fluid like all season long in terms like the cheers? Will you do different things for different opponents? Yeah, yeah. Every game I change it up a little bit. Most of it stays the same game to game, but like tonight I added about four or five different things. You know, last game we had a few new things. Lexington we added probably about 12 new things. because that, that was a big game, but you know, for the most part it's, it fluctuates every week. There's enough to keep it spiced up, keep it interesting, but there's always the same things are going to stay there. The, just always are consistent that we do every game and on there I always put like a scouting report of the other team their their student section all that kinds of stuff on there just so everyone has an understanding of what kind of game we're playing in and I think already they have an understanding of it Lutheran West is out here on the floor a lot of booze pouring in from the Red Rage tell me one example what's something special that you have prepared for these Longhorns so tonight I have a cheer I'm sure you're familiar with this if you're not a Texas Longhorns fan, you might be doing the horns down. Yes. So we're going to be doing that quite often tonight since they are also the Longhorns. 
All right, Preston, obviously you're going to be supporting Shelby, but give me a prediction. How does this thing play out? I think it'll be a tight game the whole way out. I mean, Lutheran West, a very good team. They got a uh, kid going to Finley, six-foot guard. He's he's pretty shifty, pretty good. I think he's number zero right, right there, I think. So he's pretty good. Uh, they got a couple other guys, but, I mean, overall we match up with them pretty well. I think Ramsey will lock up their best player pretty effectively. So I – I over shall be over under three and a half. I think we're going over. I love it. See the full breakdown and report. I get one of these every game I show up to where Shelby is involved. So this is by far the most dedicated, knowledgeable fan base. And then also one of the loudest pressing, if you don't mind demonstrating. Let's go! So here they are, the Red Rage getting ready to go to war tonight against Lutheran West. Thanks, Preston. Good stuff, guys. I gotta tell you, Mark, I mean, that, that's what it's all about. If you're not involved on the basketball team, coming out here, supporting, and you saw there were not one but two spirit buses that came up from Shelby. So this baby, I mean, we are loaded from top to bottom. All of the Red Rage out here ready to go absolutely bananas. Well, and this is what you love, and this is one of the differences between these two schools that are playing tonight. In Shelby, you have a community that is backing this basketball club in this school. Homegrown, all Shelby kids on one side, and then on the other side you have a Lutheran East squad that you, you look around and the community involvement, the student involvement, just not there because they are people that come in from probably two, three different counties and come in for the school. So it's very interesting to see the difference here, but again, Shout out to the Shelby community. And I've seen a lot of other MOAC fans here tonight sure. from other schools. So it's always great to see the league supporting the Shelby Whippets. Yeah, great fanfare on board here. And there's a look at both student sections. And we're not even doing justice to the Red Rage because if we pan a little bit over to the left, it's full all the way in the other section too. And it is a red out here tonight. So how do the kids in red get it done? Here are my keys to victory. For Shelby, I'm going with the three amigos. Prescott, Lance, and Ramsey, they combine on the season for 47, 18 boards, and 10 assists. They need that again tonight big time. And I'm going to go with trusting the process. Internet message boards, newspaper clippings, people like us, none of that matters. Lutheran West is a basketball team that is your opponent tonight. If you're Shelby, don't worry about the ranking. Don't worry about what everybody else says. Come out, play your game. You've worked for this play Shelby basketball and let the dice fall where they may. And what a cool atmosphere they have. Dimming the lights here tonight for the starting lineups. They got the spotlight out and there are the Shelby starting five for Lutheran West. My key to victory, I'm going with a balanced attack. This is a team, they don't have like a premier player, if you will, that's going to play in the Big Ten or, you know, like what we're about to see tonight with Colin White. They got a lot of different contributors. I think if they get what they've been getting all season long, the number one team will show that they're number one for a reason. And I went with defense, defense, defense. As we talked about, the number one team in the state, the statewide recognition, you expect this to be a really showy club. It is not. They are based predominantly on defense. They are going to sit down and guard. They're not going to be overly aggressive on the ball, but they are just going to be solid all night long and make Shelby earn it every single possession. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. Just getting our hands on Lutheran West a couple of seconds ago. They kept this a mystery the entire evening, Mark. But they're going to go with Levis along with Derek Fer Fairley. They'll have Matt Meyer along with Dylan Barchok. And then Tino Ilinaiwa as well. And then for Shelby, the same starting five that we have seen pretty much all year. DeVito, the three amigos along with Bryson Baker. All going head to head here tonight. Whippets looking to capture a piece of history, go to state for the first time. Lutheran West looking to get back to the state championship game for a second straight year. And with that, if you are watching live and free right now, we will turn it over to the audio cast. And then when we run it back later at about 6 p.m., you'll be seeing the entire video feed as it's back tap and it's going to be Lutheran West here with the basketball. Well, 1 4 high screen. It's a down screen flare screen right away to Fairley. Good job by Shelby guarding the action early. Another ball screen. They've got fairly handling. Undercut, kicks it out, almost tipped, but finds into the hands of Ili Naiwa. 
And then here is Levis, the mid-range J, and he's able to sink it through and had a little message for Ramsey. Well, and he had something for Isaiah, but right back in transition come the Whippets. Levis is a shooter. Great job of coming off the bounce, elevating and burying the first shot of the game. Right side, they've got the ball in the hands of Baker. Now skip pass over to Bruscott, her left-hand dribble. Triple teamed, and he's fouled and will go to the free throw line. And you can see on the first possession, as soon as Alex took the ball to the basket, Lutheran West was diving everybody to the block area to help. Look for Alex to be able to skip that ball on to diagonal wing or opposite corner for a three ball as this game progresses. Derek Fairley picks up his first personal foul as Bruscotter stands at the stripe. Big foul early there on Fairley. He is the guy that kind of controls this Lutheran West team. First team all district player, really smooth with the basketball. He needs to stay out of foul trouble because they're going to want him to handle it a lot tonight. Alex connects on the first. Fabulous free throw shooter, over 70% on the year. And he goes two for two. We're all even at two apiece. Fairly left side gets a ball screen. Now chucks it over here to Matt Meyer. Hands off from Barchak. Great ball movement along the perimeter for the Longhorns. That really stood out to me in the semifinals. They do a great job of moving the ball and cutting without the basketball. Meyer's a really good post player, and he is so active, setting ball screens and then flashing through the basket. Now it's back with Fairley. Senior looking to go to work. Left hand now has to pick up his bounce. The Whippets with the help side D. Not allowing very many creases right now. Well, Fairley's a great driver, but when he drives it, he's usually driving to pass, not score. The Whippets did a good job on the help side of making sure there are no passing lanes. Levis had to back it out to midcourt. A little bit of frustration. It looks on his face as he steps back. Three is wet. And he turns and tells the Shelby crowd to be quiet. Gave him a little shush. We'll see if the Whippets can find an answer here. They'll start it with Lance on the left side. Levis guarding him, giving up about six inches in this matchup. Well, and if they stay with that, maybe Shelby will slide Lance down to the block and see if they can get him one-on-one -on -one with Levis. Make Levis guard the big. Instead, it's going to be Baker finding a little seam to cut through. Now has to pick up his bounce up top. Here's Casey Lance. Ball moving into the corner now for DeVito. Quick first step, but meeting him stride for stride was Barchak. Lutheran West willing to gamble on the baseline drive and double it. If the Whippets can get the ball out of the trap, they're going to get open shots. They do it this time, and now they'll lay it off. Ramsey sets up Baker, but he is swatted big time by Matt Meyer. Well, Meyer is an impressive player. He does so much for that ball club. Second opportunity for Bryson inside. I think he kind of forced that one a little bit. Scared of the length and the interior for the Longhorns. Now Levis in total command. Likes to play really in that mid-range. But now he's got a clean look at three. Misses. Well, miscommunication there on the ball screen. Whippets were fortunate that three didn't go down. Braden DeVito. Out to Ramsey, ball fake. He's going to put up a tough runner. Side of the backboard, no rim. One and done, the board to Fairley. Pushing this way, catch and shoot for Barchak. He's off target. Long rebound collected by Meyer. Quick move, baseline, up and under, but the length of Lance causes some problems there for Ilinaya. Flutter, though, falls for Dylan Barchak, and it's a five-point lead. A big possession here for Shelby. Settle in and get an answer. And they got exactly the opposite. The sophomore going to work. It was a tough runner that time on the baseline by DeVito. One and done again for the Whippets. Well, just like the other night, can Shelby survive an onslaught? Shawnee was the one who was trying to survive the Shelby onslaught early. Can Shelby right the ship here, get things settled down, Stop this early run by Lutheran West. Two-man game. Lisa Levis, left side, now kicks up to Tino. Ball comes loose into the corner. He collects. And as they try to knife it inside to Meyer, Lance 
on the reach in, picks up his first personal. Meyer just able to cut across Lance's face there on the post flash. Because of that, they are going to whistle him for the foul. Casey just a step behind. Tough inbounds, the catch by Levis. Still guarded here by Isaiah Ramsey. He has picked up the premier score for every team so far in the tournament. He gets the switch, brush cutter on him, and it's a turnover. Baker read it. Again, great job of knowing the scouting report. Baker knew the drive was probably going to be a drive and pitch instead of a drive and score. Shelby again, pretty much no passing. Brusscutter pull up three, comes up well short. Levis from the near side, gets a ball screen. Ramsey fights over the top. Now Barchak looking for a place to go with the basketball. Drives down Main Street, left hand, tough shot. Five on four, Lance out ahead of the pack. And he'll slam it down, Mark, whoa! Well, we were wondering how healthy the ankle was after the other night. It looked healthy there. Great run out by Casey Lance. Buries it with the dunk for a finish. I was anticipating a layup on that one. You're right. I think the health meter with the adrenaline, not a problem. Meanwhile, Ileana pull up, and he knocks down the mid-range J. Solid job there by Ileana. Came off of that wide open. Drove his toes into the ground. Got it to go. Stretches the lead back out to five. As Lance catches it at the corner, they give it Bruscarter. He's going to draw a second foul here, heading back to the free throw line. Tino drawing his first personal. Nice set there by the Whippets. Quick post entry and then just curl that same side. Little bit of confusion. Alex able to get to the basket. I like the attack mode mentality of Shelby. In a couple of sets there, they've really attacked the basket. That's what you need to do against this Lutheran West Club. They're not overly aggressive on the ball, so you're going to be able to move the ball on the perimeter, but you've got to attack that interior. Get paint touches if you're Shelby. Well, Scott remains perfect at the charity stripe, three for three. One as they sub, Lutheran West just brings in additional size. One twin goes out, the other one comes in with the Myers. And then Compton comes in, probably play the four spot for Lutheran West. It's been a big advantage for them all season, just the quality of their depth as Alex goes two for two. Yeah, you bring in good quality and good size. Compton checks in, 6'5 sophomore off the bench. DeVito will be matched up with him. Look for the back door cut here. Yeah, they'll slip it inside to the other. Meyer pokes out of his hands. Lance very aggressive with the hand checking, but he makes an excellent move, and Josh goes up and under, lays it in with the left. Well, watching the post work in pregame, the, the Myers and Compton just do such a good job with their feet in the post. Really good footwork, ends up in a good shot. And again, another interior pass is going to create a foul. It's going to be the third on Lutheran West. This time, not a shooting foul. DeVito off the drive. Picked up the contact as we'll get our first look at Carson Homan, 6'4 junior. Checks in for Baker. Gives him a little bit more size and strength inside. A nice little wrinkle in that last possession by Lutheran West. Every time they've ran that set this year, what I've seen, it's been a fake the backside double, set it up for a near side back cut for a layup. Instead, they went to cross screen. On the other end here, Isaiah Ramsey gets called with the charge. It's going to be the first on him. Really selling out up top was Fairley to pick up that foul. Dangerous play. That could have been Fairley's second. He got the call to go his way. Now Levis kick out. Catch and shoot from the corner. Nothing but the bottom for Tino Iliana. Well, again, that's what they like to do. Drive it as soon as the helper starts to rotate. They kick it to a corner for a shooter. Shelby might want to stay home and allow him to take the tough contested two instead of giving up the open three. Largest lead stretched out to eight. Ramsey inside. It's going to be bobbled by home and a turnover. Tino ahead of the pack. Had to wait on a long hop of the basketball. And now they'll switch it. Levis in and out. So a bit of a break for the Shelby Whippets that time as they left Jason Levis alone. Now Bruscott are spinning in traffic. He lost the handle, but it's last touched by the Longhorns, and 
Whippets will have it well, underneath. It looked, it looked like when Alex spun, there was a lot of contact there. I thought Matt Meyer had a, maybe a foul across the forearm, but no call. So a 39 ticks remaining in this first quarter. Whippets with the out of bounds play. Catch and shoot, Braden DeVito bottoms up from long range. Big shot from DeVito, down eight, nails the three ball to get him back to five. Quick pull up at the other end. It's off target, it's tipped out. Here's Bruscotter on the hop. Pulls up for a three, back to back, baby. Dropping bombs. 6-0 run, huge response there by the Whippets. Down to a two point game as Levis walks it in between the circles. Looking to clear it out as he checks the clock down to seven ticks. Be ready to help. The freshman's in the corner here. Ramsey may slide over and help against Levis. He was able to get DeVito to bite, but throws up an air ball at the horn. So that'll do it for one quarter of play. Shelby battling back. 6-0 run to close the frame. 14-12 as we head to the second. Back here inside of the Stroh Center, 14-12 Whippets trail, but they've got the basketball and riding a 6-0 run off the strength of back-to-back -back threes. I'm Brian Skrowski, Mark Bollinger with me here this afternoon. And great skip pass inside to Tanner Hartz, who just checked in. He's fouled and will shoot two free throws. But we really feel like that 6-0 run, I mean, that could be monumental just for the confidence of this team. It was a great response in the last minute by the Whippets. Found themselves down eight, back-to-back -back threes, cuts it to two. And just as we talked about off the air, the mental side of it, that run being down two is so much different mentally than being down eight as you go to the second quarter. You start to believe a little bit that, hey, we can play with these guys, and we're proving it right now. Hartz missed the first free throw. He'll get one more. And misses the pair. Holman battling his size almost. Got a second chance opportunity, but it slips out of his fingers. A great effort there by Carson Holman. Almost gave his team a second chance. Unfortunately, ball bounced out of bounds. Whippets come down, see if they can get another stop. Starts a basketball with Myers up top. And Luther and West now running the flex, being patient. Instead of run the back cut, they run the ball side pin down. Elian Aya going to work, sends it underneath, bodies hitting the deck. We got some contact. Hartz is on his backside, was scared of just getting landed on. And it all ends with Matt Meyer on his way to the free throw line. Good, strong move by Meyer. He catches the ball in that short corner, takes that power dribble. Just goes through contact. Couldn't get it to go, but he'll step to the line to shoot two. And again, Lutheran West not interested in sharing any individual statistics with us, so not 100% sure what these kids are doing in terms of their shooting percentages or anything like that, but I can tell you, Meyer's got a pretty sweet looking stroke for a big fella. He is a good ball player, and he was shooting right into the red rage. They were doing everything they could to distract him, but Meyer stepped up with confidence. Knocked down the first one to extend it back to three. Both Myers are in the contest right now for the first time tonight. Open up the second quarter. 
As Matt drains them both. Full court pressure being applied. Tanner comes to collect the basketball. Well, at times this year, you've seen Lutheran West go to a trapping defense out of the man-to-man. -man. They may trap the first pass, or if they get it into a corner, we'll see if they change up a little bit here after some of the success late in that first quarter for Shelby. DeVito's already knocked down 1-3. Looking to go to work against the freshman. Now he'll find Baker in the corner. Levis trying to keep up. And the double comes. Now Bruscotter got Ilinaya all over his back. And I believe that's going to be the second on him. Well, Ilinaya just being extremely physical with Alex, trying to ride him off the screens. They went to the dribble handoff, and he just had a left hand around his hip and committed the foul. So Derek Fairley will replace him. And that's big. He was off to a nice start. He's got seven of the 16 so far for the Horns. Russ Goddard sizing up the D now gives off to Lance. Had the Thunders throw down in the first quarter. Got everybody rocking in the building. Skip pass, cross court, Baker into the lane. And the shot deflected by Josh Meyer. The length of these two twins. I mean, it has really made Baker uncomfortable on the few driving attacks he's had, but he returns the favor. Great play by Baker. And then yeah. the Whippets. The, the length of the Meyer brothers protecting the rim just makes such a huge difference when you're driving the basketball. Shelby throws it away. Jakaris Skelton with some amazing acceleration. Fairly, not really his game. Tries a contested three. The Whippers doing a great job on the glass so far. Now Ramsey Kempson shoot. Nothing but that one point game. Well, again, a senior steps up in a crucial moment. Isaiah went scoreless the first half the other night. Hits a big corner three. Set up Meyer, switch to the left in midair, and now this time Josh will head to the free throw line, where his brother just went two for two a couple minutes ago. Well, Shelton, the freshman, took the ball on a baseline drive. Meyer with a little curl cut to the basket. Second foul on Shelby here in the second stanza. As we're just about two and a half minutes in. And the first offering catches the back part of the rim. Well, the right-handed twin makes both. The left-handed twin steps up and misses the first one. That is one way for mom and dad to tell them apart. I wonder if they coached them like that on purpose growing up. I'm not sure, but they, whatever they did, they coached two really nice <laughs> players. Indeed. One maybe a better free throw shooter than the other as Josh comes up empty-handed. Russ Scotter has Matt on him, taking his time. Now Ramsey fakes, looks for Bruscotter to the mid-range, really tough shot, and he drilled it, baseline floating out that of bounds. That was a tough one. A lot of contact with the body. Alex just reached over with his right hand and gets it to go. Whippets in front by one. First time tonight, Shelby has tasted the lead. Fairly straight away three. And that's not his game. Here, Shelby, you live with him shooting the three. 0 for 2 in this quarter from long range. Meanwhile, Bruscotter off the screen, gets the switch. He'll have Josh Meyer on him. And now they'll look over to the sideline. Coach Galloway sending in a half-court set. As Casey Lance has it poked away by Jason Levis on the drive. And we'll get two substitutions for the Longhorns, showcasing even more of their depth. We'll see Nick Parker for the first time, the sophomore. Barchak back on the floor as well as they lob it into Ramsey. Just missed that one by a fraction. Loose ball goes to whip its way. And now Baker sets it up to Vito for three. The three ball has been huge for the Whippets tonight. The fourth three of the night. Number one is down by four. Shelby four of five from long range to open up the action more than keeping them involved here. Fairly 
looking to go to work, had to clean up his bounce. Lutheran West isn't going to panic though. Anybody that has looked at their schedule, the teams they have played, this is no big deal to them. They are used to playing tight games against really good squads. Derek Fairley, that's a little bit more in his wheelhouse right there. Got to about 18 feet and was able to find the bottom of the net. Lead slim down to two for the Whippets, who spreading things out. They got five wide, and they want to try to force Matt Meyer to come out and defend. And as we said in pregame, Lutheran West does not get up and defend overly aggressive on the ball. And because of the set, they're able to get Bruscotter matched up in the post. And Baker again affected as he went inside, giving up a lot of size in the interior. Fairly clean look right in front of us. Rimmed it out, but right place, right time is Matt Meyer. And that's what Meyer does. He just collects those rebounds, attacks the glass, converts there to get us back to even. So Shelby going to the five-out look, trying to get Alex Bruscotter with the post up. He's got the mismatch. They're going to give all sorts of room to Baker, not known as a three-point shooter. Well, that was just a matter of time. When Alex had him, the play on the post or on the block, there was a lot of contact. Alex steps out mid-post. The contact continues, and they call the foul. So Casey Lance handling up top. And a timeout taken by Coach Galloway, who came basically sprinting out to half court there to try to rescue the day. And it's our first Ted and Alley's Cafe timeout. 8-6 Shelby here in the frame. And we are all square. And I was wondering, how would this thing go early on in the game? The fact that Shelby is tied up here and we're getting close to the half, I think we're in for a sensational night of basketball. They've proven to themselves, Mark, they can hang. And they're trusting the process. They're doing exactly what they need to do, what they've done all season long to stay in this ball game. We talked about the schedule a little bit. Garfield Heights lost today in the Division I Regional Finals. That's a team that previous to today had only lost one game all year. That was to Lutheran West. Lutheran West has played St. Ignatius. They've played Lutheran East. You look at a lot of the state powers. This club played them. But then on the other side, Shelby has also played a rigorous schedule with the Lexingtons, the Ottawa Glandorfs. So these two teams coming in have been in the situation where they're going to be in today. Tight, close game coming down to execution. Execution on the inbounds. Not there for the Whippets as they'll turn the basketball over for just a third time, though, here in this first half, make it the fourth. Lutheran West has done a phenomenal job of taking care of it, Mark. They've got just one giveaway. Levis takes a peek inside, now comes up top for Fairley, getting some orders from their head, court, head coach, Jordan Duke. For round one, a lot of screening in the foul line area by Myers. Really taking their time, not a good pass by Fairley. Bodies all over the floor, but it's back into the hands of Derek. Skip pass, corner. Parker thought better of trying to triple. Good patience here by Luther and West. Didn't see what they wanted and they spring the ball out. They're going to reset again. Whippet's doing a really good job of showing five guys to the ball. Barchak on the drive. Pitches it over. Short corner. Spinning and hitting. Beautiful shot for Josh Meyer. Good job by Meyer. Caught it on the left block. Spin move. Was able to get that shot to go down. And now over and back is going to be the call. Alex Bruscotter was firmly into the front court and don't love that one, Mark. Uh, yeah, it looked like Baker was had established himself into the front court by a good step, but the official called it. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to overcome the officiating and some adversity. 
Good job by Bruss Cotter. They tried to run the back cut for the layup. Now he does get beat, but Lance meeting Meyer at the rim. The other end, Ramsey lost the handle. He was thinking about the dunk. Wow, would have been two easy points for Isaiah. We'll see if Lutheran West makes him pay. Other end, Meyer short. Bruss Cotter battling inside, and he's fouled the fourth and last to give for the Longhorns. Well, and that may have been a little bit of a makeup call. In the transition pass to Ramsey, Bruss Cotter was basically taken down. There he gives up, gets a defensive rebound. Doesn't look like there was a lot of contact, but the official who was watching that previous play immediately made the call. So it works in Shelby's benefit. As any foul from here on out would put them on the free throw line. As full court man-to-man -man pressure, making it tough here for the Whippets to get the ball into their ball handler's hands. Well, end of quarter here, we're at 40 seconds. Lutheran West will get the ball to start the third quarter here unless we have a tie-up to finish out this half. Shelby may hold and try to get the last one. Lance has been picked up by Levis the entire first half. Now a skip pass for Baker. They'll move it into the corner. Every time Bruscotter catches it on the perimeter now, Lutheran West is running at him with a second defender. They're doubling it every time Alex gets a touch. And being face guarded right now by the sophomore, Nick Parker, giving up about a foot. But with that double coming, it leads to problems. Down to three seconds here. It's got her inside. Weak side help is a swat for Matt Meyer. And they're going to award the Longhorns the basketball. Though on the Paul's driving replay, you're not quite sure how. Just .86, not a lot you can do with it as Levis launches, and that'll hit the floor and take us to the half. 22-20, the top two teams in the state going at it here this afternoon, and we have a phenomenal Elite Eight contest boiling down right now to the final two frames. Keep it with us. When we return, we will have your Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating Halftime Show. We'll have all the stats you want to know. Mark and I will get you all ready for the second half, and I'll give you some updates on what's going down at Dayton for the Girls' State Championships. You're enjoying live and free Boys High School Hoops right here on the OH Report. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Is a Crown Crasher Jeep Dodge Ram today the better way to buy?
today's high school tournament basketball broadcast, plural, coming at you live and free. Thanks to all of our amazing sponsors. Please support Shelby Mutual Insurance Agency, providing insurance for all of your needs. Contact them for your auto, home, life, and business insurance. Carruthers Pest Control. If you got a pest, call the best at 419-342-6841. Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, your one-stop shop for limestone, gravel, dirt, sand, excavation services, and custom hauling. Paul's Drive-In, great food and even better ice cream since 1956. About the last time that Shelby got to a regional championship game. They've been doing it that long. Ted and Ali's Cafe, a family tradition that still continues to grow strong 35 years later. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, some want it to happen, some wish it would happen. Crown makes it happen. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more info at 419-989-7240. And then also, Laura Swihart, a Howard Hanna real estate service agent, Make sure that you call your favorite realtor, Laura, after the game if you are thinking about buying or selling. We're going to take one more quick TO. When we come back, we will have your halftime reports. See you in a second. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Visit Crown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram today. The better way to buy. It's halftime here at the Stroh Center as we welcome you back for the Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating Halftime Reports. Brian Skorotsky alongside the great Mark Bollinger and great game between the top two teams in the AP Pole in Division II. 
competing here in the Elite Eight for a chance to punch their ticket down to Dayton. Uh, it's been great so far, Mark, and works has been a lot more the same here as this baby boils down to the last couple frames. Well, for the Shelby Whippets, you have to be extremely happy with that first half. Ended up down eight at one point in the first quarter, go on a 6-0 run, get themselves back in it, eventually take a four-point lead, but they go into halftime only down two against a team that only turned the ball over one time wow. in the first half. Here are the first half stats brought to you by Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating. And one of the chief differences, of course, as well, four of five from three-point land for the Whippets, who also were winning the rebound margin so far, Mark. That's something that you had some concerns with for Shelby coming into this afternoon's game. Well, when you watched Lutheran West throughout the season, they were such a dominant rebounding team that I was a little afraid that they were going to really pound Shelby on the offensive glass. The Whippets have done a great job defensively finishing possessions with defensive rebounds, and because of that, they hold that 14-11 rebound advantage, and they've, it's allowed them to maintain the, this two-point deficit. Jason Levis comes out, hits the first two shots of the game, missed his next five after that. I think that was pretty critical for Shelby to stay around in this contest. Some other individual numbers of note. Alex Bruscutter has nine points so far, along with four rebounds. Ramsey, three points. DeVito's got six. Casey Lance, two. Seven points for Ili Anaya for Lutheran West. Five for Levis, as I mentioned. And Matt Myers got four, as does his brother, as we are into quarter number three. Well, the defensive job the Whippets did on Levis was so important. He went over 14 minutes without scoring. Look for him to try to get involved early here in this second half. He was able to get into the painted area, like to kick out for Fairley. Now Jason squaring up, left hand into the lane, fall away over Bruscotter. Little short, Fairley snatches a one-handed rebound, tries to sneak it into traffic. It's all clogged up. And Baker out of bounds as he tried to save it back in. But look at that board. A lot of contact, a lot of physicality down there. But really good job there by the Whippets of switching that ball screen. Ramsey had Levis initially. Bruscotter took him on the ball screen. Contested shot, wouldn't go. Shelby gets a chance to get a stop and finish the possession here. Tough take by Tino inside. Left hand over a double team. They're just so efficient as we get into quarter number three. We'll see if the legs can hold up for Shelby. Their bench only played a combined two minutes and 49 seconds in that first half. DeVito was solid. He hop steps, couple jumps off the rim, and knocked out of bounds. Bruscott are battling in the interior. Hit the deck, and it's over to Lutheran West. Well, Alex in there. Battling hard, little bit of contact, ball goes out of bounds. Official right there gives it back to the Longhorns. Starts a quarter is always big time, especially in the first and the third. So after getting a score, a stop for the Horns, we'll see what they do on their second possession. Down screen, flare screen. And they parry a three. So Tino's got the first five points here in the second half. Well, look for Shelby to try to get something here. If they don't get a score, you may see a timeout next time Shelby touches it. You can't let this get away in the first few minutes of the third. Ramsey catch and shoot, and he'll splash That's Shelby. Huge. Anytime Lutheran West starts to pull away, it seems like Shelby is answered with a three. Quickly the other way, Matt Meyer with a tough catch in the lane up and under. So he matches with at least a two-pointer. DeVito, hesitation now into the corner, back up for Baker. Ramsey, who just hit one, knocks down another two for two. I love the confidence and aggressiveness out of Isaiah Ramsey. Wide open, he pulled it again, back-to-back -back threes. Whip, it's back to within three. Ramsey's got nine, he's three of three from downtown. Another tough pass in the lane. Man, what a setup for Meyer. Again, Meyer's just so difficult to guard underneath. He's active and strong. Gets the ball where he wants. His positioning is phenomenal. 
From the elbow, Lance draws a crowd. Gives it to Bruss Goddard. He now is double teamed, absorbs some contact, and flips it up over the left shoulder. And again, when Alex catches now, he's going to see the double team coming every time. Red Raids liking what they're seeing. Love to will their team to a stop. Haven't got one yet here in the third. Lutheran West goes back to the flex. And Tino again dropping more bombs, his second triple. Well, he has been the difference so far. With Levison fairly not scoring, he's picked up the slack. So Ilyanaya, he's got seven points already in the third quarter as Bruss Goddard fights through a double team and well, bailed out a little bit by the Well, more importantly, uh, who, I think that's his, I think they called on Meyer. So it could have been a big call if it was on Tina, it would have been his third. That's what I was thinking, it was going to be his third. So Bruss Scotter trying to calm things down a little bit. It's been, I mean, a hot, hot start for these charging Longhorns here in the third have not missed. Alex to bring it down to a four-point difference. Takes a big breath at the line. And it's off target, so splits the pair. Fairly with the board. And Ilya Naya tries again. First miss. He had a clean look. I think everybody in the gym thought that was going in. Including myself, it was on target. Ramsey pulls it out to midcourt. Checking over to the sideline, getting some instructions from the coaching staff. Lance has the matchup he wants in the post. Got Barchak trying to body him up, giving up six, seven inches. Well, they went five out earlier and moved, then slid Bruscotter into the post. They could do the same thing here with Lance. And we get a reach in here on Josh Meyer. It's able to poke it away from Bruscotter. As he's down, might have got poked in the eye, and it looks like Jason Levis also a little bit shaken up. They're going to say it was a kick by Bruscotter. So it's going to be Lutheran West basketball here at midcourt. As it's 12-9 here in the frame, so despite this unbelievable start for the Longhorns, Shelby hanging around. Fairly spins, picks up his dribble, hands off for Levis. Has not been looking for a shot here of late. This time he'll blow by, kick it out. Shot is up for Fairly, and that's a big three. Big three there. Levis is able to get down the lane line, draw the, the second defender over as soon as the helper moves. Fairly gets it. Now we see the trap. And it leads to a turnover. Fairly read it perfectly. They'll send it ahead. Levis lobs it up, missed it. But Ilian Naya with the offensive board loses the handle out of bounds back over to the whips. We've been waiting to see this all night long. Lutheran West has stayed strictly in man-to-man. -man. That last possession, they went to the trap, created the turnover. Shall be fortunate to not give up a basket there. It looked like we had some European soccer going on as Tino had a massive flop on minimal contact with Alex Bruscotter trying to draw some type of a flagrant foul. I believe the Oscars have already been awarded. Best performance. It's already off the table, Tino. I'm yeah, sorry. I don't think he was going to get best performance anyway. <laughs> that was a bad one. Not even supporting cast. Lance up and under. How about the hang time? Well, and that's what they need out of Casey Lance. Attack the basket. Finish at the rim. He did it there. Shelby just hanging around. Whippets probably have been down at this end, though, where they've allowed 15 Longhorn points in just five minutes. And so Fairley really milking the clock as he's a half foot away from midcourt, chilling at the logo. Five wide right now for Lutheran West. And Shelby at the moment 
content to let him take the air out of the basketball. But and to some degree, this is advantageous to Shelby. You have Russ Goddard and Lance who have played the entire game. And DeVito, I don't think I don't think all three of them not had a has sub. This may not be a bad thing. Let them catch their wind, get some rest here. Off the corner penetration, Barchak nearly traveled with it. Now shoots it up for Ilyanaya. Russ Goddard is able just to sit on that help side baseline and just rest. Now they're going to change, set a high ball screen. So ball screen, flare screen, screen and the steal. And it was Alex Russ Goddard gambling. Turns into a foul, a reach in on Jason Levis. He's pretty upset right now. He thought that he got bumped. But that's just the first personal on him. And here's the other thing from a Lutheran West perspective that I don't like. You just talked about they came out and scored 15 points early in this quarter. Why would you stop playing with the momentum you have? You've been so good offensively. Shelby wasn't getting stops. And then you completely go away from it and you hold the basketball. Sometimes coaches overthink. And I think that was a situation where Lutheran West hurt their own cause. A lot of chit chat going on here, Bruscotter and Tino. Now here's Alex from the elbow, buckets. That's one way to shut him up. You don't need to talk, just drain jumpers. Alex isn't much of a talker, he lets his game do that for him. Now Fairley splits between the gaps, sets up Levis, clean look, he comes up short, Holman just checked in. Good skies board. for the board. Good board by Carson. He's gonna have to give him some good minutes here, especially on the glass. Russ Goddard seems to be the man right now that wants the basketball. He's got 14 points. They're forcing him left. Trying to get Alex into the help. Oh, what a play, but Holman for the second time tonight can't catch it inside. Just let him a little bit too much. Carson couldn't come up with the catch. And not that that was going to be an easy deuce, but right there at the rack where Holman has been so effective on the block so far this tournament. And you're going to see Shelby here with the dead ball turnover go to the 1-2-2 press, see if they can waste some time, create a turnover here, take Lutheran West out of what they want to do. They'll just drop back into the man-to-man. -man. Tanner Hartz checked in. He's got the matchup right now with Derek Fairley. And I know the Shelby crowd's booing Luther and West holding the ball, but this is a great thing for Shelby. Get some rest. Bruss Goddard didn't have to check out of the game to get the rest. He can just stand there. You're in a four-point game here. Get a stop, and you're going to the fourth quarter with the ball and a chance to go to Dayton. Fairly checks the clock, takes a dribble, and then Hartz. That's why he's in there. Good foul. So they'll have to inbound it. Side out, 5.3 ticks. Barchak will be the tr trigger man. They've got everybody up north of the three-point line. Fairly fouled again Gotta in two deep. more seconds. Yes, yeah. Good foul, but just be careful you don't grab and get an intentional foul. So Tanner is told to go in and foul, disrupt it. They had fouls to give. Here, if Shelby can make the ball go backwards, try to get it into the backcourt. Now Fairley turns the corner and Hartz picks up another. Why not? Great coaching, great strategy by the Whippets. They had fouls to give. They gave it. It took it from almost 10 seconds down to 1.5 just by letting them inbound and then give them a couple seconds before they committed the foul. Levis would be the guy you want to find if you can. Instead, it's going to be fairly off one hop. And that is off target. We head to money time with the Whippets looking to go to Dayton for the first time ever, trailing by just four.
Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. We have reached the most valuable time of the evening. It is indeed money time here inside of the Stroh Center. It is Shelby basketball. They trail it by four. And they got Baker with a runner. Overshot everything off the outstretched arm of Meyer. So Shelby comes up empty handed on their first. Levis looking to go to work. He has done nothing offensively since knocking down the first two shots of the game. And now the ball's loose. Meyer didn't recognize it until his foot's out of bounds and it's a turnover. Well, a big stop there by Shelby. They weren't able to execute and get a basket on the offensive end, but on the defensive end, the help rotated, took away the post-to-post -post pass, created the turnover, chance to get it to a one possession game. And they'll get it into the hands of their Mr. Basketball candidate. Double team comes immediately. Someone's got to be open. It's DeVito here right in front of us. Longhorns are able to get back into position and Lance spinning down the lane. I don't think Levis got there in time, but I, that's the call. I thought he was really late getting there. That is a tough break for the Whippets. Lance getting downhill, spun away from the defender. It looked like Levis kind of pulled him down with him. The right hand around the hip. They called the charge. It's just the second on Casey Lance. So nobody really in foul trouble on either side here. Tino as well has two, but that's it. The opportunity for Shelby is going to be there on the offensive end if Lutheran West continues to run that double team around midcourt. If they can get it out of that first trap, they're gonna get gaps and driving lanes. Longhorns move it from right to left. Now here comes Ilya Naya. Bruscutter on him. This has been the matchup to watch here in this second half. A lot of aggressive play back and forth. Longhorns taking a lot of time off the clock here over their last several possessions. That has kind of been their style, though. This is a team not afraid to be very patient. And the gamble by Lance. He thought he poked it away cleanly, but he draws a second here in the fourth. Again, he didn't have the angle the official had, but it looked like Casey worked off his hip from inside to outside hip, used the correct hand, looked pretty clean from our vantage point. And Ilya Naya catch and shoot off the inbounds. Biggest shot of the night. Stretches it out to seven. Well, he has 15 big points tonight for the Longhorns. Bruscotter getting harassed by him. Backdoor, Baker, and one! Finally he gets on the board. Meyer's been giving them fits all evening. Absorbs the contact, finishes, and heads to the free throw line. Well, great back cut by Bryson. Went through the contact, got it to go down, had a few words to say. Official separate him here. It's getting a little chippy here as we get towards the end of this one. So much on the line for these two basketball teams. Baker splashes it. Big play there by Bryson. Three-point play, we're back to a four-point deficit. Shelby's gonna stick with her half-court man-to-man. Baker on fairly. Well, possessions are going to be so critical now because both teams taking their time, but Lutheran West will spread the floor, so their number of possessions may be limited here in the last six minutes. Levis handling, really tough shot over DeVito. Battle inside, and we're going to get a loose ball foul against Matt Meyer. Great job by Alex Bruscotter. 
had inside position, was able to get the box out, went up strong. Meyer with a little push in the back, forced the official to make the call. So two fouls each on both teams here in the fourth. Right back to where we were at the beginning of the quarter, chance for Shelby to make it a one possession game. They'll work it to Lance, now to the corner, and what a block shot, fairly rising to the third story. Ramsey had been perfect from downtown, but not on that one. Well, Longhorns trapped the first pass. After Alex gave it up, he made a ball side cut to the block. He was wide open. If the Whippets can do that again, they can get Bruscott or the ball on the block with a mismatch. Oh, it's going to be tipped off the length and out of bounds. I thought that was off the Longhorns. Let's see it again. They're saying Isaiah Ramsey was the last one to hit it. So a really tough break there for Shelby. As that'll be their 10th turnover. And it allows Lutheran West another opportunity to run some clock and try to stretch out this lead. Fairley's going to clear it out left side. Now two-man game as Tino comes in for the screen. Watch the backside pin down action off the ball screen. Nice move by Matt Meyer. He lost the handle going into the lane. Baker snatched it up. Value the ball here. Get the shot you want. Three straight away, and a bomb falls through. One point game, Alex Prescotter coming alive. Big shot, Bruss. And a little fist pump from the senior. He rarely shows emotion. Now the pressure right on the shoulders of the Longhorns. Prescotter with a reach in. That's going to be the third on Shelby, but I like now getting a little bit more aggressive. It, it seems like now since Lutheran West has spread it out, they're a little bit more lackadaisical on offense. They're not really looking for their shots. Right. Early in that third quarter, they were in attack mode, and they were really good. They started slowing it up, spreading the floor, and their efficiency has deteriorated. They'll get a switch. Levis now with Lance on him gets another switch as Bruscotter comes out to meet. He'll play help side, baseline drive, Meyer tied up, it's loose. Ramsey down to the floor, comes away with the turnover. Timeout, Shelby Whippets. It's a 10 and Alley Cafe TO. The place is rocking. The Red Rage up on their feet. This is turning the basketball, folks. Top two teams in Division Two. They've been going at it all night. You got to credit Shelby. They took a punch in the mouth at the beginning of the first and the third, and they've got the veteran leadership out there to not panic, Mark, and neither has Lutheran West. When things have gotten tough, they've tend to have an answer so far as well. They've been, the, the Whippets have been so resilient tonight. It seems like every time they've been on the verge of getting put away, they've come up with a stop on the defensive end and come down the offensive end and they've hit a three. The threes have been so timely tonight for the Whippets. Ramsey with a couple earlier. DeVito with a couple earlier. Russ got her hit one earlier, and then, wow, what a big shot. Down Oof. four, just a little step back, almost from the college three-point line, gets it to go. Then they get a turnover, chance to take the lead. Alex Bruscotter, 17 points tonight. Seven of nine from downtown. Shelby shooting 77%. We've lost our director. There he is in front of the Red Rage. Check it out, Preston. And everybody knowing where the camera is. Whew. Just four minutes to go. Double team. Bruss got her hounded. He's got to give it up. And Chance DeVito bells him out. Here's Casey Lance with the throw down. Well, that's what happens when you extend the floor. Luther West tried to trap the first pass. They were able to get it out of there to DeVito. DeVito to Lance. Throw it down. Shelby leads. Levis left alone, that three won't fall. Bruss got her with the box out, and he'll draw a foul. It's gonna be the third on Tino. The momentum 
has shifted, folks. Shelby, 8-3 in this quarter. And you saw the replay there. Great job by the entire Shelby team. The shot went up. They had the entire area boxed out. That rebound was coming down to Shelby no matter what. Baker leaks it out. Lance down on the block was calling for it. Ramsey, really tough shot. Baseline over Levis. But how about Isaiah? Gets it right back inside. A foul on Meyer. He complains after everyone. I'm getting tired of seeing that. It's going to send Prescott to the line. Well, and for a team that has been through the rigors of the schedule Lutheran West has played, starting to see a little bit of frustration. The body language, not exactly what you expected out of the number one team in the state. Yeah, Myers played great. Eight points, six rebounds, and an assist. But he plays like an NBA player just in terms of looking at the referees. And they're going to take him out and bring his twin brother in for him. Haven't seen Josh Meyer yet here in the fourth. Big spot here for Alex Bruscotter. Can stretch it out to a three-point margin for Shelby. This will be their largest lead of the night. Well, the Whippets have to watch out here. Watch for the down screen, flare screen action. They like to run this to get open threes. It's been Tino Ilianaya who's been the culprit of most of them. Instead, they go to the flex look. Got Josh Meyer right side, Bruscutter guarding him. Now back to Levis. He has been a non-factor since the first three minutes. Well, one thing about the Meyer substitution, this brother isn't as skilled offensively as the other. Get up and contest. Levis is going to want to pull it here. Season on the line, the senior first team all district is going to want the ball in his hands. Meyer though walked with it. Too many steps down the lane. They pulled the chair out from under him. Shelby starting to feel it now. Time out. Lutheran West. Jordan Duke feeling the heat as we'll get a 10 at Alley's Cafe TO. And I told you, Mark, in between the quarters, I said it just feels like Shelby's going to go capture this thing. They've got. 75% of the fanfare here in the house. So when things are going their way, it's vibrant. The energy, it compulses down here, and it, it's, it's palpable, man. You can definitely sense it. Well, they said there's a little around 1,700 people here tonight. So like you said, you're looking probably 12, 1,300 Shelby fans. And this place was rocking when the Shelby Whippets were able to get that score and that stop. But now, you've got yourself to the situation Finish it, finish it. You're up three, under three minutes to go. Every possession here for Shelby, you want to get the shot you want. History has already been made this season. 25 wins for the Whippets, something no team has ever done before. Only been to the regional championship once in 1957 behind the strength of Larry Siegfried, Ohio State, and Celtics great. Now, this group of Whippets looking to go where no team has gone before with a win. Well, the Whippets have the ball handling and the experience. Spread the floor. Get the, you know, we talked about the other night at this point, layups and free throws. It's all you need. Lutheran West may have to foul here at some point. Whippets a good free throw shooting team to spread the floor. You can keep the ball in the hands of Alex Bruscotter, an 80 plus percent free throw shooter. Make good decisions. You trust all four of the seniors with the basketball in their hands in these moments. Well, and you also trust DeVito. You've got five guys out there. Ramsey to the rack, puts it in, and what a feed. And they got it. They spread the floor. As soon as Lutheran West went to double, they attacked the double and got the layup. Shelby Whippets with a five-point edge. Lutheran West has just three points so far in the frame. Can they find some offense in their back? Tino was backing in, now kicks out. Levis lets it fly. He's short again, and the ball's out of bounds. Back over to the Whippets. Well, Levis has just struggled ever since he made that second shot of the night. Made the first two, and then after that, he's just been off. 
The Whippets have done a good job, but he still had some clean looks, and he's just flat out missed it. Whippets a minute and 41 away from going to Dayton. The defensive pressure turning up here for the Longhorns. Bruscotter, though, dribbles his way out of it. He's got a three-on-one, lobs it to Lance, and the layup's good! Again, the double team results in the open player. Tino's been the hot hand all night. Only player in double figures. He's got 18. Air ball. Out of bounds is fairly. Whippets get the ball back. 11-0 run by the Whippets. All the momentum on their side as you see the Pauls drive in. Replay time out on the floor. I love the energy and the excitement, but you still have to finish this. There's a minute 20 to go. Stay focus stay in the moment and I think with the four veterans that they have on the floor and DeVito himself a starter here as a sophomore a lot of varsity actions have been played out there but this senior group Mark they've been a part of a lot of big games a lot of heartbreak it seems like they've overcome that we talked about the revenge tour they marked one off the list with Mansfield senior smacked Lexington off of their list got to the regional round Shawnee beat him the last two times Mark that box. Now it's Lutheran West in their way and the number one team in the state not looking like it here in the fourth. Well, the number two team in the state has looked like that tonight. They have flexed their muscles on the defensive end and gotten stop after stop after stop. Give Shelby all the credit in the world, but as we talked about, the change in offensive philosophy for Lutheran West just completely shut down everything that they were doing so well. Five seconds off the clock on the 10 count. Bruscotter's got to burn another timeout. Smart play. Shelby still got a couple. Two more timeouts after this one. So it'll be another Ted and Alley's Cafe T.O. And more time coming off the clock. Obviously, that's a great benefit for Shelby. That's their friend at this point. And for Lutheran West, they're sticking with the man-to-man, -man, or at least they did mark in the trap. Wonder if they'll show something different that they have not showcased to the Whippets coming out here. Maybe a 1-2-2, two, two, just something to try to give them a new look. I, I, I'm not sure what they're going to do because every time they've tried to do something new, Shelby's had an answer. But if you're Lutheran West, you also cannot just allow Shelby to spread the floor because you're not good enough defensively, or maybe I shouldn't say they're not good enough defensively. Shelby's good enough offensively that they have enough ball handlers that they can move the ball and not turn the ball over. So it'll be a fresh 10 count here for the Whippets. Looking to ride the momentum provided by the Red Rage. And an offensive foul. Isaiah Ramsey off the catch, fairly sold it. And it was a forearm shiver there for Ramsey. And that's exactly what you need if you're Lutheran West. Another look here on the Pauls drive-in. They extended the arm. If he'd have kept that arm tucked in, he probably would have had the foul call go against Lutheran West. Instead, he extended the arm. Now the Whippets just need to get a stop. Huge possession right here for the Longhorns. Ilyanaya with the shot fake. Great job by Casey Lance. Ran him off the three-point line. Baseline drive up and number. Another kick out. Fairly short, everything's been short, but the offensive rebound by Parchak. You can live with the twos at this point. Run them off the line. No threes here if you're Shelby defensively. Tino has to go away from the ball screen. Now Dylan, nowhere to go with it. Shelby switching everywhere, and a timeout taken by the Longhorns. Bravo to the Whippets half-court defense right there, doing exactly what you said, Mark, trying to run them off the three-point line, switched everything up top. Well, again, little surprise by Lutheran West. Shelby's running you off the line, giving you straight line drive to the basket. With the amount of time that was left, if you're Lutheran West, go get the two. You don't need the three. With you know, There was almost a minute to go. Go get the basket. Instead, they just continued to dribble handoffs, trying to get the three. And because of that, they lost about 25 seconds of time here. And now, still down seven, three possession game, under 40 seconds to go. Lutheran West just made it even more difficult for themselves. As a Shelby fan, thank you very much. Great offense. We'll see what they draw up in this special situation. 
underneath. We'll begin with Derek Fairley on the inbound. They like to run staggered curls here. Levis, now Levis will come again. They'll try to sneak it underneath to Meyer, who just checked back in. He's spinning baseline. Wow, what a play. Good move there by Meyer, but for Shelby, that's fine. You're still up by five, down to 32 seconds to go, and it's your ball. You can live with giving up that two. So it's another Ted and Alley's Cafe timeout. This one taken by the Longhorns, just the 30. I'll, I'll give all the credit in the world to Coach Galloway and his staff. Special situations tonight and time management have been dominated by the Shelby coaching staff. They have completely outcoached Lutheran West. The end of that third quarter, they had three fouls to give before Lutheran West would get free throws. In the last 10 seconds, they committed three in a row. Lutheran West wasn't able to get anything, wasn't able to get a shot off except the desperation three, get them to the fourth quarter. Here, same thing, executed the game plan, understanding time and situation. Just such a well-coached game by the Shelby staff and just understanding and following the game plan by the whippets on the floor. Off the inbound, they gotta come deep. Oh, it never gets in bounds. So Lutheran West is gonna have another inbound underneath the basket mark. Yeah, Alex was trapped. Tried to throw it to Casey who was open, but the ball just sailed a little bit. Down to 26 seconds. Again, run them off the line. No threes here. Fairly to the rack. Tough runner. Lance gave up the body, and now here's the foul. It's going to send Bruscotter to the line. That was the last one to put him into the bonus. Interesting that Lutheran West changed philosophies. With a minute to go, they were looking for the three. Didn't get it, didn't get it, didn't get it. And now they come back in the last two possessions. They've done exactly what they should have done right away and attack the basket. Now the officials are talking. Was there a technical or something called? Not sure what the discussion no, they was called about. An intentional foul. Mm. Okay. So it was the fifth, and Alex would be shooting no matter what, but an even bigger break for the uh, Whippets. Actually, he just made the technical sign to the scores table. So somebody from Lutheran West received a technical and I think there'll be a foul. So I think Alex will be shooting four free throws here. Plus it'll be Shelby Ball. So it's just 19.6 seconds, an absolute massive change here with the technical foul. And it looks like Matt Meyer shaking out. It might have been on him. Yeah, that's what we're trying to see. We're trying to see what the officials were telling the scores table. But he made the technical signal. And now it gets definitely quiet in here as Bruscotter drills the first. Chance to make it a three possession game here. Under 20 seconds to go. Smooth stroke for Bruscotter. He's over 20. And now the technical. So there was the foul and the technical. History on the line here for Bruscotter, and all he does is showcase he's got that blue ice cold Gatorade in his veins, three for three. One more coming up. Well, Shelby Nation, I hope you understand how to get to Dayton. Start locking in that GPS. Get your hotel accommodations, folks. 51-42, Shelby. What a run here by the Whippets. 15-2 run. And some chance of MVP for Alex Bruscotter, who is up for Mr. Basketball. Right about at a season average of 23, and he's going to head to the free throw line again. Alex with 23 points, four rebounds, four assists tonight. Leading the way, but again, you look up there, the balance. Russ Goddard with 23, Ramsey in double figures, DeVito and Lance, six and eight. Again, just great balance tonight by the Whippets. Alex drills it again, stretches out the lead to double figures. The number one team in the state. Two losses for him, both to D1 state powers. Finding out the Shelby's a Division II power this season. 
Here's Levis. Nice crossover, Ramsey made it a very challenging acrobatic layup, but he's able to drop it. And a timeout by the Horns. Be their last timeout. But look at that fourth quarter diff, Mark 20 to seven. When it mattered most, Shelby came alive and we already talked about the third quarter change of philosophy. I think that they outcoached themselves here tonight, did Lutheran West. They were in an unbelievable groove. They scored on their first six or seven possessions in the third quarter, and then they spread it out, and they have not bounced back since. They did. They, they came out, and they were so good in the third quarter, and you talked about it a couple of straight possessions about how Shelby just could not get a stop. Guess what? Lutheran West, they stopped themselves. Like yes. you said, they spread the floor with over two minutes to go in that third quarter. I think it was 2-13 spread the floor to try to take the air out of the ball a little bit. And it just gave Shelby a chance to regroup, get their legs back. And it has proven to be a huge difference. And because of that, Shelby's really close to punching their ticket. All the Whippets fans believe that they have won already, but it's a Longhorn still in a layup. But the clock's going to continue to wind. And the Longhorns just took a timeout they don't have. That's a technical foul. Should be a And you'll see Alex Bruscotter step into the line again. It is a technical. So Lutheran West gets the steal and the layup. They call the timeout they don't have. And how about this moment? Looking at the Red Rage eye to eye as he's walking down here all by himself. And he just says, let's go, baby. Let's go. What an impressive performance by the District 6 Player of the Year, Alex Bruscotter. This is gonna be his 26th point. And now the Red Rage will finish their cheer. They believe they have won. And in just six seconds, that will have been the case. As Alex remains perfect from the free throw line tonight. The fairy tale continues. What a story. These Shelby Whippets. Ramsey dribbles it out, and for Shelby fans, there's a new byline in your history books. The greatest team in program history continues to march. We're heading to Dayton next week. 55-46, the Whippets do what many thought was impossible. They knock off the number one team in the state by nine. We'll take a timeout. We will be back with all the post-game coverage you can possibly handle. Brought to you by Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating. We'll have all the post-game pressers, an MVP interview, the nut cutting, plenty more on the way live and free and all in video form here the rest of the way on the OH Report. We'll see you in about two minutes. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you.
back here inside the Stroh Center at Bowling Green State University. There are a lot of smiles on Shelby fans here as they are starting to get Dayton on the brain. First ever regional championship for Shelby in program history and their magical historic season continues. I'm Brian Skrotsky, Mark Bullinger with me here inside of the Stroh Center. And just the, the energy in this building right now, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of goosebumps just thinking about this run that Shelby's been on and 19 straight wins for him now. So this is a team that was not an underdog coming into the tournament until now, and they've overcome that. Boy, what a fourth quarter performance. I'm almost, I, I can't even believe that just went down like that. Wow, what a performance. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that you dream about as young players. You know, the Alex Bruscotters, Casey Lances, those guys, they grew up putting in the work with the dream of making it to the state Final Four, and that dream is going to come true. As you talked about, that fourth quarter, Shelby was down 40-36. to 36. They go on a huge run to finish the game and give credit to them on the defensive end especially. Levis came out, first team all district, leading scorer for Lutheran West hit his first two shots, one of 11 the rest of the way. In the last 30 minutes, just shut him down, only wow. one basket. That is crazy for a first-team all-district performer that's been doing what he's done on the big stage, not just this season, but last year as a junior as well was their big-time performer, leading them into the state championship game against Bucktel. But in that fourth quarter, 22 to nine. Shelby obviously the beneficiary of a couple of technical fouls, but they did the work to get themselves in the position to where there was frustration on the end of the Longhorns. And then Alex Bruscotter, who was 15 of 16 from the foul line. I mean, he was the ultimate closer tonight. Shut the door on Lutheran West. Shut the door and punch your ticket because you're going to Dayton with a chance to win a state championship. Ooh. Now, kind of looking ahead here, because okay. we can do that now. They can, they can enjoy it for a few minutes. At halftime, Vincent Warren was winning, was defeating Zanesville Maysville 42-27 uh, down at OU. Last time I checked, Maysville had come back and was ahead 50 to 46. Now Maysville is the team that won on a three-point buzzer beater against Bishop Hartley down at OU the other night. So I just saw that highlight last night. That was a pretty wild it was finish. Pretty, pretty impressive. The Bob kid is really good. He hit a banked in a three to beat Bishop Hartley. They are winning right now, so it could be Shelby versus Maysville in a semifinal, again, a very, very winnable game for the Whippets. Maysville, I've seen them several times. They're gonna have a tough matchup with Shelby if they do come out of that OU region. Well, I think we as media pundits have been saying all along, Lutheran West, they've been getting a lot of the press clippings. Max Prep has recognized them as one of the top 50 teams in the entire country. They've been state number one since the AP poll came out because of the schedule they played and the wins and the scalps they've collected. They earned it. They, that, that's probably the best team in the state. We were just talking off air too. If these two teams play 10 times, we're not so sure that Shelby gets more than two or three of these. But on any given night, it can be yours. And the Whippets and this veteran group led by the three amigos, they get it done here. And I don't think they're gonna be an underdog against any team that's still remaining in D2. I, I would say with the teams that are still remaining, Shelby and probably Alder, Archbishop Alder would probably be the two teams that are going to be the favorites, which would be a championship game. But you know what? We can worry about Dayton next week. Enjoy this hey. one, Shelby Nation. So you just saw Isaiah Ramsey get his medal. Kid made some big plays tonight. He was four of eight from the floor, 11 points. Bruss got her though, man, the star of stars, 27. Four rebounds, 15 to 16 from the line, as we mentioned. He only shot seven field goals, and he had 27 points. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And, and when they did shoot it, Shelby, so efficient. 16 of 29 from the floor. Wow. Seven of nine from three. Right. And when you shoot it well, that covers up some other mistakes that you may make. They shot it well tonight compared to Lutheran East, or excuse me, Lutheran West. Lutheran West just 19 of 44 from the field, six yeah. of 19 from three. And that's the difference in your ball game. Saw Bryson Baker collect his gold chain. Just one of four, but his bucket was huge. Lutheran West was going on a run. He had that and one basket. I think it frustrated Meyer a little bit as well. He capped it off for his four points. Casey Lance made some phenomenal plays tonight in the efficiency that you talked about. Four of six from the field, had a couple of monster dunks. 
One of them might be up for the top play of the tournament as far as I'm concerned. I'm throwing that in my countdown. It was a pretty good one. And again, just the, the balance, everybody playing to their role. Russ Cotter, of course, led him with 27. But big threes early from DeVito, couple big threes from Ramsey, the dunks by Lance, the three-point play you mentioned from Baker, Holman coming in doing his job, Tanner Hartz with the crucial yeah. fouls at the end of the third quarter to keep Lutheran West from getting another basket. Everybody played their role. Coach Galloway and staff, Shelby, congratulations. How about Greg, just in his third year, taking this club to new heights, places they have never been before. And I'm sure he's going to appreciate it because there's so many coaches across the state that have had great resumes and stuff, but have never made it to the Final Four. Enjoy every second of it. As Alex Bruscott and company are right now, Final Four bound, history made here tonight at Bowling Green State. And look at all those veterans out there. That's what's led Shelby this year. This team, this class, they personified just that, but it's been the work ethic and just the amount of minutes that they put in. I know all these kids are part of big time summer league basketball, the big three, of course. They've put in the workload and it's paying off here, Mark, and it's impossible not to feel just amazing for these guys. You feel great for them. And again, they've put in the work and they earned it. They didn't come out here tonight and win a regional championship because they showed up to practice this week and, and put in the time and the, the preparation. This is something that they have earned over the years. And especially talking to some Shelby uh, teachers and staff, talking about Alex Bruscott, about how after school, you're either finding him in the weight room or in the gym over the past year. He wanted to bulk up a little bit, get stronger. Just a credit to those kids because they, again, earned this championship. Nothing giving. Everything earned for this group right here. The public school taking down the private school today in the championship. So long, Rocky River. Shelby continues to dance on their way to Dayton as they've already got the ladders put up. And it looks like Alex Bruscotter, he's, he's rushing over there. He, he wants to be the first to get he, those scissors in his like, paws. give me the scissors, I'm going up that ladder. <laughs> the district net cutting was nice. Oh. This, this just topped you. He's, he's, he was so excited, so excited. And if you're Alex, hey, buddy, enjoy that one, but get one more. Cut down one more set of nets. And I'm interested to see other pundits and stuff on the Twitter that see, like, kind of the whole collection, like Martin RPI. Are they going to have Shelby as a favorite going into Dayton, regardless of who's still available in the field? I, I think they have to. Uh, you know, obviously, we knew number one and number two. Shelby's had a great RPI because we talked about the schedule they've played. You know, tonight we're going to cover the Ottawa Glandorf game. They're playing in a you know, regional final tonight. Shelby took them on. They took on Lex. They played good Marion Harding squad, a good River Valley squad. So this Shelby team has been tested, let alone, you know, we talked about the trip through the revenge tour. They have been challenged all season long, and they've played their best basketball at the right time. And because of that, they have a chance now to go on and play for a state championship. Here's Casey Lance. So strong the second half of the season. Cannot say enough about how much different he just looks at on the floor, the big plays he's been making. And he is that firecracker for the team, not in terms of personality, but what he does with the big dunks, the block shots, the rebounds. I mean, that kid, he's been phenomenal the second half of the season. And we were a little nervous coming out before the game today. We were watching him closely in warm-ups yep. to see how good the ankle was going to look. He rolled it pretty bad the other night. We weren't sure if it was going to impact him, but man, he came out early and he showed right away that he was going to be able to play. He played a lot of minutes, played over 31 minutes tonight on a bad ankle. So, you know, kudos to that kid, but you knew he was going to tough it out. Coach's kid lives in the gym. Yeah. You knew he was going to be out here. No he question. was going to play hard tonight. Tanner Harsh just cut down a piece of the net as well. And I really like what that kid brings to the table. Doesn't play a whole lot of minutes. Just got in there for a couple tonight. But not only did he play his role, he seems to relish that style of play, what he does. Well, and, and again, we talked about the effort. Seven guys played tonight for Shelby. But there are other kids, other seniors. They have, you know, they have eight seniors. There are other seniors. They're JV players that are dressing for tournament. 
they're just as important than giving these guys good looks during practice and playing hard. So give credit to all those guys. They may, there's other guys on that team that may not have made a shot tonight, may not have got a rebound, may not have even entered the game that played a role in getting this team to where they are. Program-wide, team-wide, kudos to the Whippets. Clearly, they're enjoying this, their fan base as well. A lot of parents and administrators, teachers down here on the floor right now. Got it all circled up. The Reds rage, nobody is left for them. They're still stacked from floor to ceiling. Taking in this performance, and Coach Lance comes up and gives me a big yeehaw. Way to get it done. Congratulations. You heard that right here first, live on the OH report. We'll work with them a little bit in the press room, Natalie. We'll try to ask some better questions. Maybe it's our fault. We'll take the blame for it. <laughs> we will have post-game coverage inside of the media room for you guys coming up. I imagine probably the three amigos will be lined up there along with Coach Galloway, and then we'll have our most valuable player. We had Alex Bruscotter in the semifinals. It would be impossible not to pick him tonight. I think that we got to talk to that kid. The other seniors as well did their role, but if you want to talk about stepping up, even though those free throws uncontested at the end of the game, if Alex doesn't drill all of those, you know, the game's still a little bit in the balance, and it's like, okay, there's still a little bit of pressure. He took that pressure off. He did. He stepped up the line with confidence and made 15 out of 16 tonight. And, and on, even on a couple of technicals, it's harder to shoot those free throws out there with nobody on the lane line sure. than it is on a regular free throw. So, again, Alex just stepping up like he has all year long. When this team needed a basket or a free throw to go, he got it done. Braden DeVito, six points for this young man tonight. Two of four from the field, two of two from the free throw line. His plus minus plus nine here in this competition. And what I really enjoy about him, he took one ill-advised shot in my opinion, but he otherwise that let the game come to him. He's a young dude playing on a big stage. You can get intimidated. I remember I did my first tournament action when we played some really good teams. It was like, wow, this is big boy basketball. You didn't see that from a kid of his supreme talent. Well, in, in a lot of times in situations like this, you see kids, as you said, try to step out of their comfort zone and step into a role that they normally don't play. Whippets didn't. Those guys knew exactly what they had to do tonight, whether it was off the ball, you know, defensively, whatever. They played their role to a T. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, man. So much fun down here courtside. Love this view at Bowling Green. My favorite venue for tournament basketball. And we've seen some Richland County teams here over the last six years when Lexington made their run. They had to knock off the number one team in the state. Nobody gave them a shot. All they did was upset Wasion. And then in the championship game, oh, that was big time as well. This Shelby team, even though I think they came in with a little bit more prestige, more people around the state knew about them, they've got a little bit more of that similar feel to them because of what they had to accomplish here against Lutheran West. That I was I was up till 2 a.m. last night, Mark, kind of getting my scattering report, trying to find some video clips, looking at the schedule they played, and it was just like, man, they, they've, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of teams with 20-plus wins, some that are still playing, like in Ignatius, and you mentioned Garfield Heights, and it's like... Shelby too, but then that was another tough thing for me is I put on the schedule best wins for Shelby. I had to leave off teams like Marion Harding times two, like River Valley times two, because their collection of uh, schedule also very impressive. They're the top teams in the league. River Valley, Mary Harding did a really good job of helping Shelby get prepared, but then they stepped outside of the conference and went and took on the big boys playing at against the Ottawa Glandorf yep. team with Colin White. Those are the kind of games that not just on the floor, but in preparation and just the hype and stuff around the game, that was so crucial of keeping them even keeled emotionally tonight. I think that was a huge, huge reason why they were able to be so successful in the tournament because their season prepared them for it. The, the Whippets went into tournament play confident and ready, knowing that no matter who they played, they were going to be able to match up and take home a victory. Yeah, going into the tournament, I think they had won 14 in a row, so it's hard for your confidence to kind of be struggling a little bit. And now they've increased that 19 consecutive dubs. Obviously, it's the longest streak right now in Division Two, And 
down in D4. I think there is an undefeated team, if I'm not mistaken, unless they got beat in the regional finals. But if, if they have, then this is the longest streak in the state. I'm pretty confident they haven't because I'm, I'm not sure anybody's going to match up well with Richmond Heights. Oh, well, well, uh, uh, that's uh, right. Other than Rusha. Rusha's really, really good too. But uh, no matter what, you know what? I, I don't think Shelby cares one bit <laughs> nah. whether someone else has a longer winning streak or not. We'll take, you know, if you win six games in a row, you could lose your last regular season game and you win five or six in a row and go to state, you don't care. It doesn't matter. Not a concern. Yeah. There's, there's four teams left in Division Two. You get to practice on Monday along with wow. three other teams. Wow. So cool for Shelby. We, of course, are going to follow the Whippets to Dayton. We will have coverage for all of the semifinal games actually at State along with the championship games next weekend. So myself, Travis Barty, will be down there. Very much looking forward to that. We can do audio cast, exactly what you saw live and free here this afternoon for the State games as well, plus some highlights. And uh, big kudos to Travis Barty right now who is down in Dayton along with Madeline Zuzuto getting us some highlights for all of the tournament games, the championship games, and the girls' state championship today. So make sure you stay locked in on the OH Report all day. We've got that coverage for you, baby. Okay. Throw out a quick congratulations there if you're watching. Assistant coach Davey Hip went up and cut down the nets. Davey played for me in some AAU, good family. Great, he was a good player back great, in his he day. He was a good player, great guy, does a really good job on the staff. As we talked about, that, that coaching staff just had this team so well prepared tonight. And Coach Galloway, you've earned this one, buddy. Congratulations. Go cut it down. Just one more thread keeping that net alive. Greg's going to take care of that. So he's got the sectional. He's got the districts. Now the regional championship trophy. And he's such a pro, he left the little dangling piece. Congratulations I'm, to Coach Greg. I'm just waiting for that huge smile to come across his face. He's trying to keep himself so composed right now. He's keeping it cool. All right, so the team is going to line up for a group photo. We're going to go ahead and take a break as well so that we can get that team picture and then get all set up for the press conference. So keep it here. Our post-game coverage rolls along right after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Visit Crown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram today. The better way to buy.
Tonight's coverage of Regional Championship Basketball would not be live and free without contributions from these amazing sponsors. How about Scout Construction Services LLC, who's got more than a decade of business, so you can trust them with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout for more info at 419-989-7240. Call your favorite realtor, Laura Swihart, after the game if you're thinking about buying or selling a home all over North Central Ohio. Shelby Mutual Insurance Agency, providing insurance for all of your needs. Contact them for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Carruthers Pest Control, if you got a pest, why not call the best? 419-342-6841. Arcelor Middle, smarter stills for people and planet. They are hiring now with competitive wages and benefits. Visit ArcelorMiddle.com and click Careers for more details. Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, your one-stop shop for limestone, gravel, dirt, sand, excavation services, and custom hauling. Paul's Drive-In, great food and even better ice cream since 1956. Ted and Allie's Cafe, a family tradition that still continues and they're still growing strong 35 years later. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Some want it to happen, some wish it would happen. Crown makes it happen. Another thank you to Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. And lastly, Phillips Tube Group serving the Shelby area in a proud Whippet supporter. We'll be right back here with our post-game coverage, and we will hear from your Arcelor Middle MVP, Mr. Alex Bruscotter, coming up soon.
A little bit, yeah. You know, it's we have a luxury to have some length with our guards and like. In those moments, um, that to, to take care of the basketball and to either get free throws or layups. Yeah, we talked all year about the confidence and how it's grown when you're shooting, specifically after the Lux game. When you hit those back to back threes, too. So while Shelby is in the media room, I mean, technology is beauty when it works, Mark. I have no idea why it's cutting in and out. It worked so flawlessly for us earlier today and then uh, a couple nights ago here for the semifinals. But this is just the first of two regional championship games we're going to be here for tonight. And uh, the second one, I think it's got a lot of similarities in terms of the matchup. Ottawa Glandorf looking to go to state for a fourth consecutive season. I think there's only been 13 other teams in the history of of the state that have been able to accomplish that so they could put themselves in some rare air. Taking on a Margareta team that much like Shelby, they've been on the precipice on the cusp of breaking through here recently and now getting to a regional championship for a first time. So it's not necessarily David versus Goliath, but there's definitely a heavy favorite coming into tonight's game. There's a heavy favorite, but Margareta is an outstanding ball club. They finished ranked number five in the state in the final AP poll. I believe 24-2, so outstanding ball club. But when you talk about tonight, it's sort of just like the game we watched. We just watched Alex Bruscotter leading Shelby to a regional final. And then, of course, tonight, the highlight, the guy everybody's going to be watching, is Colin White, up for Mr. Basketball, committed to Ohio State. He's a guy that can do it all, has done it all for several years. So it's going to be another good one tonight and two very evenly matched teams. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing uh – Colin perform. I, I've only seen him, uh, I think, one other time with my own eyes. And uh, Shelby, a team that we know went toe to toe with them. Bruscott are actually out them in terms of points. So those two being up for Mr. Basketball, I think very worthy. And uh, Colin here in the semifinals, I, th I think he was 20 plus points in the first quarter and ended up with 36, something crazy like that. Well, he is a treat to watch. So I'm excited to hear you call it while watching him because he is exciting. But again, he's another guy that he can score at any time, but he's also just so unselfish and a team first guy that you really love the way Otto Glandorf plays. And that's kind of the culture they've created at that school. Of course, their girls were playing earlier today. 
for state championship, their boys tonight, and just like we saw at the Shelby community, you know that they're going to fill their side of the Packs gym out. because they love their school and their basketball teams. Well, it looks like Shelby has emerged there from their seats, and we'll have our MVP on the way out. So um, let's take a quick 30-second break, and we'll be right back. We will hear from your Arcelor Middle MVP. I am now courtside with your most valuable player here in the regional championship game, Alex Bruscotter, saving his best for the biggest moments here tonight. And, man, what a zoo it was out on the floor. Shelby Nation certainly came out here in droves. We think probably at least 1,200 people from your community making the trip up here. So just the environment and what it was like to play out on this floor, if you can put it into words for us, I'd love to know from your perspective. I just want to say how blessed I am to be put in this situation just with amazing teammates, amazing support system. We came off um, on our way here and there's people all lined up, um, you know, cheering good luck and have big signs. So, um, I mean, I've been put in a great situation and I can't, I can't describe how happy I am right now. You obviously made a lot of clutch free throws in a big fourth quarter performance. So let's start at the end of the game there. You guys are down a couple points going into the fourth quarter and then you just lit them up and you hold them to I think nine points. You guys scored 22 or something like that. So what in your opinion happened in the game where you were able to take in total control when the game mattered most? Well, I think, I mean, we were really comfortable tonight and just, I mean, at, at halftime, um, we were talking and stuff like we usually do and then like I was, I made a joke. I was like, "Man, we're shooting good." Like the only three we've missed was when I pulled up from 35, you know. And then, um, I mean, we were all tight, um, not tight. We were all loose, and there was no like tightness. We were all just um, playing our games, not doing too much. And then um, we all just kind of came together um, in the second half. So playing the number one team in the state, not that anybody wrote you off, you guys are number two. We know that you're an unbelievable team, what they've been able to accomplish, all the height that they have out there. Um, just playing against a team like that, why do you think that you were able to not just match what they have, but then overcome them by the end of the night? Well, we have something different than the, what they have. We've been playing together since second grade, and I mean, we know, I know when Casey's gonna be cut, and I know when Bryson's gonna be popping out. Like, we just have great chemistry, and we rely on each other, and, and difficult moments and the fan base I mean that was also something they it was so loud like on our side and that was like our sixth man was just great tonight and um, I mean I'm so blessed to be in this opportunity I'm I'm so happy for my guys uh, heading down to Dayton of course next week the final four first time in program history so rewriting the history books getting your name on there, knowing that this is the only team that's ever done this. You haven't had a lot of time to reflect, but just how cool is it to know that, hey man, we're gonna be that team hanging in the banners? Well, ever since second grade, I can just remember going up to a state tournament. I mean, I would be all excited getting out on a Thursday and uh, spending the weekend in Columbus or Dayton and just watching games. And I just remembered thinking like, I wanna do this like, that was my only go going, goal going into high school. Like, 
I didn't care about Mr. Basketball or first team this. Like, I just wanted to go to state with my guys. And, I mean, there's there's no better way to do it with uh, beating the number one team in the state. Mission accomplished here tonight. Still a lot to do going on to the state final four. We can't wait to follow you to Dayton. But for now, just one last thing to do. You know what it is. Take it away. I mean, I know I said this earlier. Our sixth man, our crowd was amazing. It was, it was awesome. And then just seeing... All the guys just come together um, just to make this moment. Oh, wait, I know I should be shouting out people, but uh, shout out you guys for coming and shout out our six man. You can give shout outs any way you want when you're a regional champion. Alex Bruscott are your MVP presented by Arcelor Middle. And because of that 22 to 6 runs, they win a regional championship. Now they advance to the final four in the re or excuse me, in the state semifinals. State semifinals, they'll take on Zanesville, Maysville. I think it's a good matchup for the for the Whippets. They don't Maysville doesn't have a lot of size, so I think it's a good matchup, and I really think that Shelby has a great chance to win next weekend and advance to a state championship game and a chance to cut down the nets and come home as state champions. Yes, sir. Yeah, very much looking forward to it, seeing how the ship, uh, the Whippets perform on the big stage. But that is going to wrap up our coverage here at Bowling Green State University, at least for this one. The second game here tonight going to be a great one as well in the Division Three Regional Championship between Ottawa, Glandorf, and Margareta. Do want to thank all of our generous sponsors, including Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, Carruthers Pest Control, Paul's Drive-In, Ted and Alley's Cafe, Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Mechanics Bank, Scout Construction LLC, Phillips Tube, so many sponsors, everybody coming together to bring you this live and free coverage, and it's been a great time. For my staff here, Droy Hollenbeck running top cam, Justin Wilson down on the sideline, Adam Thompson, my producer, director, and Mark Bollinger, I'm Brian Skaronsky, saying so long from BG. We'll see you with its fans down in Dayton.